Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be continuing the top 100 board games of all time, number 60 to 51, the 2022 edition. Now, all of these games are rated 9s, which means they are excellent games. I always want to play them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. And thank you so much for all of those already subscribed. Could not be here without you. So we're almost halfway there. Fantastic. Let's jump into the list with number 60. My number 60 goes to the game Patchwork. Coming in at number 94 last year, this is a head-to-head -head two player game where you and your opponent are gonna be creating patchwork quilts through the use of drafting polyomino tiles. You're gonna do this by paying either time, which is the amount of turns you have in the whole game, or buttons, which are your currency and also the points at the end of the game. Now, my favorite part about this game is actually the juggling of multiple currencies. As I already discussed, you have only a limited amount of time, so the number of turns is very important as to which tiles you're taking. So do you spend a lot of buttons, the form of victory points, in order to take less time tiles? There's a great decision there. But there's also one third type of currency that ties into the scoring of the game. At the end of the game, you're going to lose two points for each empty space on your board. So really, the biggest commodity here is space. And a lot of these gigantic tiles in the game are extremely awkward, and I I love that about this game because when you take a huge tile, you're gonna have to figure out a way to make it fit. And when you do, when you're able to do the impossible and find a piece that fits and nestle something into a nook and a cranny, it feels incredible. It's such a satisfying game where you're taking risks in order to gain maximum value, but that pays out in the form of these multiple currencies and an extremely satisfying feeling. For being so straightforward, having a great depth to complexity ratio, and just portraying a fantastic puzzle in the form of multiple currencies, Patchwork is going to get my number 60 this year. My number 59 goes to Detective, a modern crime board game. This has you playing the roles of Antares detectives in a campaign or single shot scenario setting where you are going to be doing your best to follow leads, travel around the city, and use your time efficiently to solve a list of questions at the end of the game. Now, my favorite part about this game are the core mechanics, actually, the lead system and the time management. And this is only found present in the mainline detective games, so not season one that's not going to be featured on this list at all. Now, the big thing here is whenever you start a game, you're going to have some leads that you can follow, things you can go to, people you can talk to, places you can investigate. And this is fantastic because these leads are tied to locations. You'll have a map of the board and you'll start in the headquarters. You can travel from place to place, but that will cost you time. So you have a great decision here where do I go to an area and look at all those leads there or do I really need to find this one piece of information do I make it all the way to the lab you really have to prioritize what information is important for you in the moment and I really like that about this game I also really like the thematic integration and how this game really keeps the time period that it's set in in mind and you're actually going to be using the internet and whatever features are available at the time in order to gain information about the location areas etc there's so many cool things to discover here lots of great attention to detail throughout the core system and this is my favorite heavy detective style game a wonderful experience a great challenge this is detective modern crime board game my number 59 my number 58 is going to the game Twa, a game where you play as merchants, soldiers, clergymen, and you're doing your best to gain coin and prestige and hopefully defend the city from attacking invaders. The core mechanism of this game revolves around the dice that you're going to be using. At the start of each round, you'll roll dice and put them in your district, and you can use yours for free or you can pay money to use others, which puts a prioritization on ensuring that you have some sort of cash so you can make this exchange. After you gather up to three dice, you'll add up their values, and based on the action you're taking, let's look at the captain here, you you divide it by a specific number. So you take all those three dice, add them up, divide by four. Whatever that number is, that's how many times you get to perform this action, which really increases the value of high pip value dice, as well as prioritizing you to get specific numbers to reach even division points. There's so many cool things to think of when you're taking these actions, and my favorite part about the game are actually the combinations of these actions. Each game, you're going to get three cards for each color, and there's three colors in the game. You've got the white, which is going to allow you some manipulation, yellow, which generally allows you to get money of some sort, and then you have the red, which is going to allow you to attack incoming invaders or manipulate them somehow. You have a lot of cool overlap with the way that they intertwine, and every round for the first three rounds, you're going to reveal a new card, which is going to introduce a new mechanism to the game and change up the cooperation and coordination between the individual cards. I really like how these cards are also first come, first serve, so you have to actually have a person to put on there to benefit from this, so there's competition as well with the cards for specific actions. 
I love this tension, I love this choice, and I love how they affect the values of the specific colors of the dice throughout the game. There's a lot to love in Twa, but that dice selection system makes it one that I continuously come back to and I can't turn down playing. So that is Twa, my number 58. My number 57, coming in at 58 last year, is Codenames Duet. This is a cooperative two-player version of the critically acclaimed party game Codenames. Now, this is a game where you're going to be playing and giving clues based on relationships between words on this face-up grid. For example, say that I want to give a hint for dressing and chip, I would say ranch, and then I would say a number after that to show how many I'm connecting. So ranch two. It's now my opponent's turn to respond and try to figure out what I was talking about and what connections I make. And my favorite part about this game is are pushing how many connections you can make and the relationship that develops throughout the game. So how many of these words can you actually connect and how many can you reliably think that your partner is going Going to be able to pick up and I love this pushing that envelope and seeing how much you can really get away with for each of your clues because you only have a limited amount of clues to get all of these words in addition the relationships that you develop with the partner you're playing with are super interesting as you really get to know them and how their brain works and what sort of connections that they may think about first and what is present on the board and how that plays into that there's a lot to love here and this is a fantastic package that continuously keeps you playing when the other person is giving clues you're thinking on your own and I really like how the words are also shared between the players on this unified grid. A wonderful system, wonderful implementation of this game, one of my favorite word games. This is my number 57, Codenames Duet. My number 56 goes to the game Warp's Edge. My number 39 last year, this is a solo only bag building game where you're taking a starfighter of some sort and fighting against an entire fleet of enemy ships and finally, after you defeat all of them, are able to take on a gigantic boss afterwards. Now, the big core mechanic of this game is that bag building. And on your turn, you're going to be assigning these chips to the different units on the board. Based on the way that you defeat the units, you get a reward of some sort, which can reward you with more powerful chips or give you some instant in-game effect. Now, I really like this system. I love the bag building. But my favorite part about this game is the time management as a whole. This game is played in what are called warps. Every time you run out of chips in your bag and you can't pull, you reset the game. You have to restart from the beginning, refill your bag, and then do your best to try to push through those enemies once more. I really enjoy this system because it means that every chip is valuable because it extends your life and your time in each warp. Even losing a small chip could mean that maybe you get one less round to actually activate. And your whole goal is to defeat the mother ship in this set amount of time. So I really love prioritizing what things to keep, what things to get rid of, and how you're building your bag throughout the course of the game. This time management also bleeds into the way that the enemy ships attack. Every time you take damage, you have to get rid of chips in your discard pile, which can be good to give you more powerful turns. But once again, it's a double-edged sword because you're actually getting less time in the warp phase each round. So you have a lot of choices here when it comes to what to lose and when it's okay to take specific amounts of damage. I really like this decision. In addition to that, I really like the randomized setup where based on the starfighter you pick, you're going to have special tokens that are unique to that starfighter and you do start off with a token that's going to right off the bat put you in to a position to make some powerful plays. It's an extremely gratifying game to play, the satisfaction of the tactile feel of pulling the tokens, as well as the allocation and the constant bonuses and power-ups and getting to run through these fleets again and again. This is one that I really enjoy, Warp's Edge, my number 56. My number 55 goes to Fleet the Dice Game, a game with a theme I love, where you play as these owners of a fleet of fishing ships, and you're going to be using these fleets to catch fish as well as unlock all sorts of bonuses in the form of income as well as building your own personal buildings. Now, this game features two gigantic roll and write pads, but one thing that I really enjoy about the game is the income track. So every time you gain coins of some sort, you have this coin track at the bottom of your board, and every time you cross off a star, you get a bonus action, which means you can do anything you want. And that's another thing I really enjoy about this game is the diversification. There are so many different tracks that you can go for, lots of things that just score you straight up points, some things that are going to give you points over time, and lots of these specialized buildings on the wharf that are going to give you special abilities that you can pick from. There's a lot of diversification straight from turn one with your starting ability, as well as special roll cards that you can play with as well that'll give you some sort of interesting starting setup. Now, I really like the different fish available and how you can prioritize specific paths. Do you go for income early? Do you go for extra cash during the actual fishing phase? Do you just go for straight points and try to capitalize on that with the captain's club? 
There's a lot to love here, and the entire flow is satisfying as you do have this element of dice drafting as you play and what different actions you're going to be taking. I also really love the mechanism where everybody is going to get a die of whatever is left, so you can do some really cool planning based on if you're first or last and trying to really bank on specific dice being left. It's a great system, satisfying combo building game with lots of bonus actions here and there, and one where you're going to be consistently marking stuff off your board. I love this one. That is my number 55, Fleet the Dice Game. My number 54 is going to Teotihuacan City of the Gods. This game has you playing in a rondelle system where you're going to be using your dice and moving around the board, and every time you land on an action space, you'll either gain or pay Coco. Based on the people you already have on that action space, you're going to take an action at a specific power level. And that's actually my favorite part about this game, is the action escalation. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these grids here. So these grids show a certain number of dice, as well as the values of those dice. So you're actually going to cross-reference that, and whatever the lowest number that's on those pips, that's going to determine how strong your action is. But also, the more people you have, it increases that even more. And I love this system. The expansions have pushed this one step further and made it so that all of the different tiles kind of use the same method. And I think it's a really fascinating system and one that I really enjoy. And that also leads into my second favorite part about this game, which is the ascension system. Once those dice get all the way up to sixes, they ascend. They essentially die. You're going to go up on some point tracks here, but you'll also gain some sort of bonus and push that end of the game one turn sooner. But this is really great because those bonuses are pretty fantastic. You can go up some of these tracks as well as get some other bonuses through that death track where you're going to be gaining these tiles that'll give you additional bonuses. So it's bonuses on bonuses on bonuses, but when those sixes ascend, they will be set to ones, which means that when you take those other actions that revolve around the potency of your dice bibs, they are going to be weaker. So there's some interesting trade-offs here, but it's all about the timing of those two aspects together because at the end of the round for each of your workers that's in that four or five category in those higher dice levels you have to pay more cocoa to keep them alive and feed them at the end of every round. This is such a fascinating system and it's one that is just very exciting and satisfying to play as you're getting progressively stronger and stronger actions and you're allocating the aging up of your different workers. The technologies in this game are fun. The little bonuses that you get all over the place are a blast and I love the actual building of the pyramid in the center of the board. There's a lot to love here with Teotihuacan from the tracks, and I really enjoy the expansions that include special player powers. It's one thing that I also really liked in Zulkin, so I really like that that pushes you in unique and more interesting strategies every time you play. This is one that I can't get enough of and is extremely satisfying to play. My number 32 last year, this is 54 Teotihuacan City of the Gods. My number 53 goes to Micro Macro Crime City. This is a crime solving game that is blended with the Where's Waldo mechanism, where as you play, it's a cooperative system, you're going to have these cards that give you little objectives and little questions that you're gonna have to find, and you'll be following them from clue to clue to solve a gigantic case. And right off the bat, that's my favorite part about this game. I love the way that this presents you the questions right away, as opposed to waiting until the end of the game to actually find out what you're trying to do. And I love that about this. You have this sense of progression as you play, as you find piece after piece, and it guides you through this whole puzzle. Each of these objective cards has some sort of flavor that's attached to it, and they're easily identifiable. I also really enjoy that on the back of the objectives, they have little coordinates, so that way if you are stuck, you can get a hint as to where you may look, or a confirmation if you do think you have the right answer, which I think is really well done. This game also has a sequel in the form of Macro Micro Crime City Full House, where you're going to have age-specific ratings on the different cards and missions, so you actually know which cases are going to be appropriate for different audiences. And I really appreciate them putting that step in the right direction because there were some risque cases in the first one. Another thing I really like about Macro Micro Crime City is the way that you can track people during the game. For example, you have this car here, and if you look back a little bit, you can see that same car in the same picture. So you can kind of time travel and see what people are doing and when, and follow them as they're moving and maneuvering around the city. This is so fascinating and leads to a way that you can all follow the case at different times and really go at your own pace when you're solving these crimes. Micro Macro Crime City proves to be an intuitive system that is extremely accessible with an objective system that's going to keep the tempo of the gameplay something that you're going to be wanting to come back to consistently. One of my favorites, number 53, Micro Macro Crime City. My number 52 goes to Hostage Negotiator Crime Wave. This is a game where you play as the hostage negotiator. You're going to do your best in order to rescue as many victims as possible from a terrible criminal. 
Now, each of these criminals has their own setup conditions, scenarios, and each one's going to be different. And as you play, though, the core mechanism that binds it all together is this hand management and roll to resolve system. On your turn, you're going to be playing a card and resolving the action on the card by rolling dice. But all these cards are multi-use. You can use cards for their action. You can use them to make misses, successes, or you can actually commit cards just face down for extra conversation points. After you've performed all your action, you'll use your banked up conversation points in order to purchase new cards for your hand and move forward through to the terror phase, where the criminal is going to do something that's going to prevent your success. You go back and forth until hopefully you've rescued as many hostages as possible and either taken out or captured the criminal. My favorite parts about this game are the hand management as well as the thematic integration. The hand management is so fantastic fantastic as you're allowed to take risky plays by playing cards with less cards in your hand or you can take more surefire plays by spending things a bit more conservatively. You have some really cool choices when it comes to pushing your luck and I love the mitigation that comes through committing cards for successes as well through rolling re-rolls by claiming specific conversation cards. You can also claim certain cards that will allow you to get more dice on future rolls so you can really prepare for big action turns. I also like that the cards that you don't spend you can carry from round to round so you can save specific action cards for certain times. I also really like how certain scenarios will introduce new action cards to the game which are extremely flavorful. And talking about flavor, the theme in this game is absolutely wonderful. I love how they've taken these concepts and abstracted them into cards while retaining some form of thematic integration. My favorite way to play this game, though, has to be through the use of the career expansion, which links a series of 10 years of your time on the police force, and it's going to follow you as you play through your hostage negotiator career. I really like how it introduces the abductors through difficulty levels, and how it has some really cool thematic ties through the use of career and personal events, which can introduce stressors. I really like how this can make certain scenarios more challenging by offering new restrictions or new ways to do things. Career expansion also culminates in a gigantic finale that takes the progress that you've done on the previous missions into account so every single hostage's life matters and I absolutely love that how the importance of these lives really comes to the forefront. Sporting wonderful hand management and integration of theme Hostage Negotiator is a solo experience that you're not going to want to miss. So that's my number 52 Hostage Negotiator career crime wave whatever it may be. And finally my number 51 number 46 last year this is Heroes of Tenefer a deck building game where you take your adventure and go through dungeon after dungeon increasing the power level of your character while deciding when to push and when to pull back. My favorite part about Heroes of Tenefer has to do with the core turn system itself. You'll play cooperatively and go from dungeon to dungeon fighting creatures. Every time it's your turn to contribute to fighting the creature, you'll reveal three cards from the top of your deck, and it's up to you to decide right then and there, do you want to use these cards to contribute? You can, if you want, just dump those cards and pull another three and do this as much as you want until you get a hand you're comfortable with. But here's the kicker. That deck of cards is your stamina for the dungeon, and once you're done, you are done. You can no longer help. So do you take a subpar hand to ensure that you can help out in the future, or do you make sure you can really really get some work done this round right now. I love this pressure and I love this tension because it's up to you to make that decision and because you're only looking at three cards at a time and you have that knowledge of your deck because you've been progressively upgrading it throughout it introduces some very fantastic decision space every single time that it's your turn. I love this system and I love the cooperation and how you're constantly talking to others about what is an okay hand to keep. It really forces that cooperation coordination and I love that about this system. My my other favorite part about this game are just the way that you're going to be creating your deck. Every time a monster is defeated, those are the cards that get added. As you can see here, each of these cards is double-sided with a monster on one side and ability on the top. And every time a person defeats a character, that is going to go in that person's deck. So you also may want to be timing the defeat of these creatures in specific ways so certain characters can build their deck with certain cards. There are some cards that only have abilities when they're in a specific character's deck. For example, you might have some card that's really good for the Barbarian, but is pretty useless for everybody else, and I love that about this. There's a lot of cards that allow you to change and modify your deck or swap cards with each other, so once again, it really pushes that cooperation and coordination as to who is getting that final blow in and whose deck is going to be getting what cards. There's a lot of fun combos. It brings me back to games like Yu-Gi-Oh! where you're looking for specific cards in your deck and you're milling stuff and you have some tutors that you can use and you're constantly aware of the cards in your discard your deck and hand at all times. This is a wonderful experience, one of the best deck building adventure games out there. I love Heroes of Tenefer. 
my number 51. And that's the list. Those are my numbers 60 through 51 in my top 100 board games of all time, 2022 edition. Which of these games have you played? Which of these games do you enjoy? Which of these games do you disagree with or should be further forward on the list. I'd love to hear your opinions on them and what you think in general. But thank you so much for all your support and all your help. We are halfway there through this list. Thank you for everything. Side Game Strong.